Hi everyone, I'm Kent Louie, science teacher and talking head, talking about science education and broadcasting from beautiful Vancouver, Canada. This is episode 103. When we teach science, often we get into the habit of teaching all the terminology and structures about a topic before we have students actually explore that topic. However, if you think about how we develop our language, when we were little, we started by mimicking sounds and experimenting with words, and then piecing them, piecing them together into simple sentences. Then, at school, we're taught grammar, punctuation, and all those rules in order to help us do language better. But when we first started, there were no rules. Now, I think the same can be done for science. Have students do it first, and then afterwards put structures and labels in place. And I did do this with my students when I introduced CER. That's Claim Evidence Reasoning. And I think it went quite well, especially since students got to do science. You know, all I needed was some super basic lab equipment like this and a super simple exploratory question for them to answer. I'll get to all those details in a second, but before I continue, handouts for this episode are available at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP103. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, when teaching CER, again, that's claim evidence reasoning, I used to go over what a claim is, what evidence is, and what reasoning is, and how reasoning differs from evidence. Then we work through some examples and all that stuff. Now, this works, but I think it can be done better in a way that is less prescribed and more organic because if it's more organic, it comes from the students. And if it comes from the students, then they'll remember it more. So this year, here's what I did to introduce CER. I got students to practice using our triple beam balances. That's one of the first things we do in Science 8. And I gave them this science question to explore. It basically said, is a flask that's two times bigger by volume also two times bigger by mass. I got to them to take down this question and this data table in their notebooks. Then they used the balances to find the mass of a large flask, 250 mils, and a small flask, 125 mils. Then I got them to write a conclusion based on their research. The next day, I went around and I checked their responses. Now, there was a wide variety of responses. Some parents, so, so, some parents, sorry, some students answered with these long detailed paragraphs that answered the question directly and folded in some of their observations too. Those were really, really good. Most responses, however, were very, very short and didn't answer the question directly. Some said something like, you know, flask A is 38 grams heavier than flask B. That, that was all they said. Now this is all good, because after I check the responses, I go over what goes into a strong conclusion or claim, as I put it. So then I show them what would go into a strong conclusion using some sample data. I tell students that all strong conclusions have three things. Number one, they need to answer the question directly. So here, the answer is no. Next, they need to summarize the measurements and the data that support the answer. Now, students may think, this is a kind of a redundant thing because the data table is right here. But I tell students that in a real science paper, the data table may be on page eight, while the, while the conclusion is on page like 12 or 13. So we need to include the details of the data in our conclusion. Plus, it's our job to analyze and sift through the important information that supports our conclusion. So I tell them to write. The second thing that's important in, in, in a conclusion, according to my data, the 125 mil flask has a mass of 97 grams, while my 250 flask has a mass of 121. Finally, I ask students for an explanation as to why a flask that is double the volume is not double the mass. Now, if you look at a flask, we notice that a lot of it is empty space. So increasing its volume increases not only the amount of material used, but also the amount of empty space. An empty space has negligible mass. And that is basically what I wrote down over here for my uh, reasoning. And that, in a nutshell, is what CR is. And notice I didn't go over any labels or terminology, even though that's what we did. We did claim, evidence, and reasoning. And this is all deliberate because, again, I want students to try doing CR in an 
excuse me, in an organic way first, and then go over the precise details later. Lastly, after all this, I give students another question to answer. Again, using our lab equipment to, as practice. And here's the question I asked them. I asked them, is the mass of 100 mils of water measured in a small beaker the same as, a, as the mass of 100 mils of water measured in a large beaker? And then I get them to, again, write another conclusion. And I'll check it again. I'll provide feedback, et cetera, et cetera. Eventually, I will get to the CER terms and then provide more structured practice. That's it for this episode. Please smash the like or subscribe button or leave a comment below. Handouts once again are realsciencechallenge.com slash EP103. Thanks for watching and let's talk science education again soon.